Hello, welcome back to my channel Zero to Siva. We are in week one and day three. So today uh, we'll learn about uh, soap basics. We'll understand about Wisdel and how to consume soap web services using Soap UI. So we are actually taking small small steps every day. I hope you have completed day two and day one videos as well in my week one playlist. If we do consistently, if you work, if you if you actually see my videos every day for one or one and a half hour and do practice every day in seven weeks, I am sure that you will become confident in Mule 100%. You will be able to crack interviews easily and you will be in a position to clear any certification exam as well. If you try to learn a concept totally in just 2-3 days or a week, you will not remember. That is not the way to learn. Slowly, step by step, 1 to 1 and half hour a day, come here, learn Learn at your pace. Uh, whenever you have some free time, leisure time, learn, practice as per whatever I have given exercises. And I will see you cracking the interview in next seven weeks. Okay, let us start with basics of SOAP. What is SOAP? Basically, what is its purpose? SOAP actually stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. Okay, what do I mean by it? Assume that I am writing any application in any programming language. For example, assume that I am developing an application in Java and for my application, I have a customer database. What I have done is, I have written a class called as customerservice.java and in this customerservice.java, there are two methods. Add customer, which will take a customer object and it has a logic to insert a customer into database. Get customer by ID. It will take ID, fire a query on database and get the customer by ID and return it. So in my application, let us assume that I have created an object of this customer service. Now the point is how to access this object from an external application. Assume that I have written, somebody else have written .NET or Python application. They want to invoke an object in my application. How to invoke methods on that object? How to access that object? So that is what SOAP tells us. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It will tell us how to access an object. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, assume that this application .NET wants to invoke a method on this object. Basically, here my application has a service and the, this application wants to consume that service. So, this application is called as a consumer application and my application is a service provider. It is providing a service that a consumer can invoke. Okay, this is a consumer application and this is a service provider application. Now, uh, how can a consumer application communicate with service provider? Maybe what we could do is, we can write an application. In my application, I could write some logic to listen for any HTTP requests on a HTTP port. So if you know in Java, you can write something called as a servlet that can be accessed over HTTP. Assume that in my application, I have written a servlet map to slash customers. Then how to make a request to this servlet? What we can do? A consumer can make a HTTP request to HTTP colon slash slash the IP of this machine colon the port 8080 assuming that I am exposing over 8080 slash customers if any request is made then the request will go to this servlet and servlet logic will be invoked okay but now
my consumer wants to tell to this servlet hey invoke this add customer method and give me the response how does a consumer tell to my application what object and in this object what method to invoke while invoking this method okay there is some uh, data which needs to be passed right so uh, the the consumer may prepare an xml this xml may contain the data or information about which object to invoke and also which method to invoke what arguments to pass etc but what should be the format of this um, xml that is where soap protocol comes simple object access protocol comes what it says is it tells about this structure of this xml okay how does the structure of this xml look like according to soap here i have written the root tag must be soap colon envelope a soap envelope contains two parts soap headers and soap body in the soap body you have to send the xml whatever the consumer wants to set tell wants to send this xml should tell what whatever xml you are passing inside soap body this xml should tell which object and which method to invoke okay so a client application or the consumer application has to create a soap envelope but fine how do uh, how does a consumer transfer this xml to the service provider we can use some protocols like http so maybe in http post we can make a post request to the application and in the post request we can send this soap envelope xml right so once the service provider application receives this xml it will identify oh which object to invoke on this object what operation or what method to invoke what arguments to pass everything will be inside this xml so that method will be invoked and response will be again given in the response body again the response also should look like this it contains soap envelope soap headers and soap body hey what are this headers there is a request soap envelope request soap envelope also will contain soap headers request body or soap body response headers also can be there so what are these headers headers are nothing but key value pairs right so maybe this headers contain some data which needs to be passed along uh, with a request maybe let's assume that this service requires a username password to access this service there is authentication we need to send the user credentials so the credentials can be part of soap header right that is one example there are a lot of other types of headers one of the soap header for now is a header which contains the authentication details like username token password token etc okay let us forget about this soap headers the most important thing is inside soap body what should be the structure of the xml we will we will see okay so any consumer application they can make a post request to the url the url at which the service can be accessed we call this as endpoint url okay so consumer has to make a http request to endpoint url and send the soap envelope okay fine now is this http the only protocol through which we can send soap envelope no actually soap protocol does not talk about how to transport the soap envelope 
to the service provider. We can use any transport protocol to transport the SOAP envelope. SOAP protocol only tells about the structure of the SOAP envelope. That's all. So SOAP is transport protocol independent. Okay, what do I mean? Suppose if this is my server and uh, this is my client. Whenever client wants to send some data to server, what this client application can do? Of course, client application can create a SOAP envelope XML. And how to transport this XML to server? We can use any transport. For example, till now we used HTTP as a transport. But there are other transport protocols like SMTP. I hope you know. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. For our mailing servers, we use this SMTP. Assume that I have an SMTP server. Okay. Now, we can send a mail, mail message to the SMTP server. Addressed to some recipient. We send a mail, right? To will be the recipient. From will be the sender. So we can send a mail to SMTP server with some two address. In the mail body, we can send the SOAP envelope. Okay. Now this server can actually receive messages, mail messages can be configured to receive mail messages from this SMTP server. Once it receives a mail, in the mail body, there will be SOAP envelope. And <clears throat> based on the data present in SOAP envelope, the corresponding object will be accessed, the corresponding method will be called and where to send the response in case of mail, right? So basically in a mail message, a mail message also will contain headers and payload, right? So in headers, there will be two address and reply to address as well. So, whenever a consumer is sending a message, he will add a reply to mail as well. Reply to as well. So, once the service provider receives that mail message, it takes the SOAP envelope, whatever the client has sent as part of the mail body, executes the logic. Then, whatever response it has to send, it will send it to, send it as a mail to SMTP server again. To which address? reply to address so client can receive the message like that uh, we can ask, we can actually use smtp protocol as well soap tells only about how the structure of soap envelope should look like it does not talk about any transport protocol we can use any transport protocol while sending this soap envelope okay so we can use HTTP or SMTP or FTP or JMS, any protocol for transferring. So remember, SOAP protocol is transport protocol independent. SOAP protocol tells about only the structure of SOAP envelope. Okay. But now you may have another question. <clears throat> okay, this is a service provider. It might be exposing multiple services. Each service might have multiple methods. How does the client understand what all operations are exposed by this service? And this application might be exposing multiple services. So there should be some way to describe about a service. Okay, what is the service name? How many methods? How many operations are present in this service? For invoking this particular operation, what is the input data expected? And what is the output response it will give? Everything should be documented somewhere so that any client application can understand how to consume it. So what is that? So what we need to do is we need to write a file called as WSDL web service definition language web service 
definition language so it is basically an xml file in which we describe about our service what is the service name what all operations a service exposes for each operation what is the input data what is the output data everything we describe inside the wsdl file wsdl we call it as wsdl web service definition language so a service provider has to write this of xml ending with dot wisdom and give it to the consumer the consumer will be able to get all the information about how to consume by reading the wisdom file how does a wisdom file look like right how to write your own wisdom how can a consumer use that wisdom to consume these all topics we'll see in our next video see you in next video See you. Bye.